assembled under one tent. You see Madame Beardo and Ganga, the snake charmer, handling the biggest and the most dangerous cobra in captivity. Toy, the little lady who has tied herself into knots in every country in the world. A sensation, folks, a sensation. Colonel Tim and Lady Tiny, the biggest little people on earth. Ah, oh, folks, you can't afford to miss it. Think of it. For the small sum of 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar, you're going to see the greatest show on earth. Come on, let's... Everyone, the line forms on the left. Come on, folks. Do I have to beg you to see the greatest show on earth for a quarter? Tickets, please, tickets. One at a time. Don't crowd. There's plenty of room for all. Hey. Hey. Tickets. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, including humble self. Pass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, give me your attention, please. Right here in front of this platform, you will next be entertained right here. I will now introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest little artist within a circus on the face of the earth. They have appeared before all of the crowned heads of the world. Colonel Tim, 42 inches small, and Lady Tiny, 2 inches smaller. They will now entertain you. Chinese gentleman just come in here? You mean the guy with his own sideshow? He's right over there, boss. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce Gangor, the Hindu snake charmer who fearlessly handles the most poisonous reptiles. Gangor! Are you Mr. Chan? Humbly admit identity. You, Mr. Kinney, who extend most generous invitation to circus. Yes, I saw in the morning paper you were in town. I wanted you to be my guest. <laughs> Very kind. Free ticket to circus, uh, like gold ring on merry-go-round. <laughs> Make enjoyment double. <laughs> oh, uh, pleased to meet honorable wife. And uh, latest blessed event. Glad to know you, Miss Chan. Happy to announce, have taken whole full house for vacation. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multitudinous family. Very interested in little people. Well, I'll introduce you. Come over here, you two peanuts. This is Tim and Mrs. Tim, the biggest little runts on earth. Size of package does not indicate quality within. Thank you. We've often seen your pictures in the papers, Mr. Chen. Yes, and we've read about every case you've worked on. 
Have a cigar. Uh, thank you. Do not indulge. Oh, I won't. Uh, have the peppermint stick? Thank you. Uh, you also? Thank you. May I have your autograph, Mr. <laughs> Chan, please? Very great pleasure. Uh, uh, hold, please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, right this way, right this way, I will introduce to you Su Toy, that beautiful little flower of the Orient. She ties herself in a thousand knots. Watch her, ladies and gentlemen, the human puzzle, Su Toy. Here. Oh, Joe. Excuse me. How about you and me getting together? I've got to see Can't you. make it tonight. Too many things to look after. Now, you've been keeping me waiting for weeks. And you'll keep on waiting till I'm good and ready. I don't want to impose on you, Mr. Chan, but when I sent you the invitation to come here tonight, there was a little matter I wanted to get your advice about. <laughs> Excuse, please. They've promised wife not to let anything interfere with family vacation. It will only take a few minutes and be doing me a great favor. Can take matter up now? Well, uh, I've been getting a lot of threatening letters lately. They're all unsigned and they arrive very mysterious. Now, frankly, I'm a bit worried. If you'll notice, they're all, uh... Oh, well, it's time for the show to start. I'll tell you what, Mr. Chan, if you wouldn't mind slipping out during the performance, I'll be at the business wagon in the back lot at 9 o'clock. We'll be there. Thanks. You better gather your family together. I'd like to take you someplace where there's a snappy dance orchestra. Oh, boy, I'll bet you can shake a mean rumba. I'm shaking you right now. I told you the show leaves town tonight. Then how about tomorrow night? If it's not too far, I can run over to see you. Excuse? <laughs> Pardon interruption, please? Oh, Pop, this is Sue Toy. Gee, you ought to see her do her stuff. So pleased. <laughs> Uh, hope romantic offspring has not tried to twist charming artist around finger. Oh, no, Mr. Chan. I had my fingers crossed. Wise precaution uh, to accept applesauce with large pinch of salt. Excuse, please. Show sure starting. Where are brothers and sisters entrusted to your care? Oh, I've got that all fixed, Pop. <laughs> What's the take tonight? 2680 That's so good. No, business doesn't pick up. I'm afraid I won't be able to pay you those notes by the end of the season. Well, that's your worry. I know I'll do the best I can. I may have to ask you for an extension. I'll get this straight, Gaines. With me, a bargain is a bargain. If you can't meet your obligations, I'm taking over your half of the show. But good heavens, man. Every dollar I have in the world is tied up in this circus. You can't do anything. Oh, yes, I can. And another thing, Mr. I... Kenny. The ape's acting up again. Blake says it'll be dangerous to work him tonight. Well, why bother me about it? You're a head animal man. Use the whip on him. Yeah, I did that once, and you know what it got me. If you ask me, Blake's using good sense. Nobody's asking you. I'll take care of the ape. You're making a mistake, Joe. You can't run a circus with a bullwhip. You look out for your end gains. I'll take care of mine. Boy. Take it easy. Yeah. Quiet. Why don't you sing him to sleep, Blake? That's what's the matter with him. You pamper him. Well, he can't be handled tonight, Mr. Kenny. If he goes bad in the big tent, someone will get hurt. Even the ape knows you're yellow. We you gotta show him who's boss. Put it 
Don't you see you're only making him worse? Well, fire, Blake. Give me the key to that cage. That's okay with me. If I have to crawl to anyone like you, I don't want the job. I'll take that key. Oh, you don't. Going or anybody else. Get back to your work, Ben. You and I will handle this later. Lou, can I see you a minute? Yes, come on in. What's the matter? Why aren't you working? Oh, I'm through. I've quit. What again? Yeah, but this time it sticks, and I'm taking you with me. Oh, now, now. Tell me what it's all about. Oh, I'm sick of the whole rotten mess. Let's get away from here and live like regular people. I'll scrape up enough dough somehow. Oh, you wouldn't leave the circus for all the money in the world. You know you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Where's your sister? Oh, Marie's over at the wardrobe tent getting her costume fixed. Oh, so that's what it was. You had another argument with Kenny. Yeah, he's not going to boot me around like he does the animals. Marie. Oh, hello, dear. I'm sending your act on early tonight. Why? What's happened? A uh, scrap with Hal Blake. I fired him. The eight pack isn't working. Oh, Joe, you're always getting into trouble with someone. Well, that's the only way to get things in this world. You've got to fight for them. No, it isn't. You only make people hate you. And I want people to like the man I'm going to marry. Here's your cape. Thanks, Nellie. There's your music cue. Come on, kid, get going. What's the matter? Joe only comes around when Marie's here. Just to burn me up. I'm going to tell him so next time. That won't get you anywhere. If you were any kind of a brother, you wouldn't have let him treat me the way he has. I'm taking care of that in my own way. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honor to be able to introduce to you that peerless little aerial star, Miss Marie Norman. <laughs> The only artiste in the world with any circus today, doing a forward somersault from a flying trapeze and catching by her heels. She will perform this death-defying feat without the aid of Annette. Marie Norman. Pop, I was just looking for you. Following road map? <laughs> I saw you leave and figured something was up. I wanted to be in on it. Curiosity responsible for Cat needing nine lives. You looking for somebody, Mr. Chen? Had appointment here with Mr. Kinney, but find door locked. Well, this is Mr. Gaines, Mr. Kinney's partner. How do you do? Anything I can do for you? Hey, Pop, look. There's a light on the inside. There shouldn't be. I locked the wagon up myself over half an hour ago. Uh, perhaps advisable to investigate. Uh, have key to wagon? Yes, I have. This 
bolted on the inside. Most peculiar. Door bolted on the inside suggests someone there. But no answer to knock. There's one way to find out. Break the door in. Uh, that isn't necessary. I'll get a lock. Uh, one moment. More than one way to remove skin from cat. Ventilator on roof, open. Perhaps a little man can enter. Why, I couldn't get up there. Giant, very good for first step. Sure. There you go. It'll be a long drop to the floor. Uh, may borrow walking stick? Why, sure. <laughs> Uh, Jack, have no trouble sliding down beanstalk. Lift me up, I can't see. Why, certainly. Nothing, please. Towers, get the show, Doctor. Too late. Mr. Kinney, dead. Dead? He must have been murdered. Neck broken. Strangled by very powerful hands. How'd he get out? Wasn't the cage locked? Sure it was. Someone must have opened it. Never mind that. Come on, fellas, scatter out. Don't let him get near the big top. <laughs> but the door was bolted on the inside. Much evil can enter through very small space. Police must find answer. Oh, wait, Mr. Chan. You're a detective. Can't this be handled quietly? Very happy to be of assistance, but police must be notified. I'll do it, Pop. There's a telephone across the street. All of you go about your business as if nothing had happened. I don't want any excitement while the show is on. I'll get Dr. Mead. The police will probably want him. Chief of the Homicide Squad? There's been a murder at the circus. Of course I know it's murder. I'm a detective myself. Okay, Chief. Suspected same. Observe. Hair is not from the human head. I got it, Pop. The monkey hairs. They had killed him. Very good deduction. But how did he get in? The wagon was locked on the inside. Suggest we make inspection outside window. Come. Found anything? Not a trace. Jerry, look at those shadows over there by the canvas. You, Frank, go around the other way. The guy don't get behind you. Ape track. Gee, Pop. 
That is barrel he used to climb up to window. And here's some more prints on the barrel. Good work, Holt. It took a lot of nerve to do that. Are you hurt, Pop? <laughs> Side of wagon, uh, not like uh, feather bed. <laughs> Thank you so much for fortunate rescue. Oh, that's all right. Here come the police, Pop. Recommend you stay here. Study approved method of police. But, Pop, I... One ounce of experience worth ton of detective books. Go ahead, fellas. Give the place the once over. I can give you the dope, Lieutenant Macy. The big ape escaped during the show and murdered him. The proof is right there on the windowsill. Right here, Mr. Macy. Looks like your tip's about right, kid. They're ape hairs. There's only one thing I haven't figured out yet. How they got there with that window locked. That's right. Here. Well, that's easy. Look. The window must have been propped open at the time, like that. Now, you stay right here, and I'll show you how it was done. You better come this way a little. All right, now turn your back to me. That's it. Now don't move. The ape creeps up on the outside, reaches in through the bars, grabs Kenny by the throat, shakes him, chokes him, <coughs> kills him. Now then, in getting away, he knocks the prop down. And the lock snaps shut. <coughs> Gee, Mr. Macy, you figure that one out fine. Thanks. I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, no. So let me have that magnifying glass again, will you? Sure. There's one more thing I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, what's that? The barrel wasn't here. It was over there. Now, here's what happened. When the ape stepped down, the barrel tipped over, like that. Gee, Mr. Macy, I hope I didn't hurt you. You're pretty good at figuring things out yourself, ain't you? Here's your glass. Glad I didn't break it. Oh, thanks. Now that I got that figured out, I want to know how the ape got out of that cage. Perhaps can offer a slight suggestion. Oh, this is my father, Charlie Chan, Lieutenant Macy. How are you, Mr. Chan? You sure got a bright kid. He just gave me a good stare. Uh, sometimes suspect uh, ambitious offspring of giving bull. <laughs> oh, did you find anything new, Pop? Ape released purposely. Hal Blake, who worked animal, have two keys to cage. Lost one earlier tonight. Either Blake open cage or person who find lost key. Uh-huh. Where is he? Where is he? They've taken him away, lady. Just a minute, please. Who are you? I'm Marie Norman, Mr. Kitty's fiance. I want to go to him. You couldn't do anything for him now, miss. We didn't want to tell you until after the show, Marie. So sorry. Offer deepest sympathy. Someone killed him. I know it. They hated him. They all hated him. What do you mean by that? Uh, later, please. <laughs> Suggest you take young lady away. Come, Marie. Well, what she said about them hating Kinney proves your point, that the ape was released purposely. We better round up the whole outfit and give them a grilling, Mr. Chan. <laughs> oh, one point more. It would suggest you look for threatening letters Mr. Kinney 
had an inside pocket of coat, now mysteriously missing. Excuse, please. Uh, must return to family. We'll say good night. Well, thanks for the help. Don't mention it. Uh, dig up the manager of the show and tell him I want to talk to everyone connected with the case. Yes, sir. Gee, Pop, I hate to walk out on this case. I can see some interesting angles. Contortion, lady? Gee, that reminds me. See you later, Pop. Help! Gosh, Sue Toy, I'm sorry. Let me out of here, you. Listen, please, I just couldn't get back any sooner. Don't speak to me. I just had to put you in there safe. All right, come join me. Now, Sue, so hey. you give me a melon. Give me I'm don't, don't I see? Hey, Sue Toy, let me out, will you? Sue, Sue, come back here. Oh, uh, Mama, uh, you have railroad tickets? Oh, yes. Mm. I can find my raincoat. Oh, hurry to bed, you're in. Hurry here, Daddy, here's your shoes. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I think we ought to stick with this case, Pop, and go to the next town with the circus. Have desired to remain permanently in monkey cage? Have late visitor. Here I am, Mr. Chan. Oh, come in. <laughs> Excuse me for coming here so late, but it's terribly important. Very happy to welcome distinguished little visitor. Oh, hi. 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 oh, Mr. Chan, are you going away? Yes. Tomorrow I'm taking family to observe wonders of Grand Canyon. Oh, I'm so sorry. You are in trouble? Sit down. Mr. Macy took my husband and Mr. Gaines and some of the circus people down to police headquarters. Mm, distinguished uh, lieutenant of police act with the streamlined speed. And he says he's going to try to show up until the murder of Mr. Kinney is solved. If he does that, the circus will just go to pieces and we'll all lose our jobs. That would be most unfortunate, isn't it? It'll cost Mr. Gaines everything he's got. And Mr. Chan, he's been an awfully good friend to Tim and me and everyone. We've been with him for five years, and there never was any trouble until Mr. Kinney joined the show. How long Mr. Kinney been partner in circus? Just the last two seasons. Mr. Gaines needed money, so he sold him a half interest. But Mr. Kinney didn't know how to handle circus people. He was only used to honky tongues and try to run things with his fists. Men who seek trouble never find it far off. It's Mr. Gaines who's in trouble now. Can't you do something, Mr. Chan? Please. Unfortunately, have already made plans for vacation with family. Oh, I was depending on you to help us. Oh, Pop, don't let them close down the circus. And don't let them arrest the little people. And the clown. And the elephant. Oh, oh Pop, please. please. You see, Pop, I knew we should have stayed on this case. Oh, oh Pop, come on. Please. <laughs> Jury seemed to render verdict without retiring. Then you'll help us, Mr. Chan? Final decision in hands of judge. Judge say yes still. Oh. <laughs> Suggest we visit police headquarters and see Lieutenant Macy. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm going with you, Pop. Contradiction, please. You stay here. Help unpack. <laughs> we had a pretty tough season, so naturally the show went into red. I gave Kinney notes for my share of the losses. Then if those notes weren't paid by the end of the season, he would have taken over your share of the show. He could have. Well, as far as I can see, every one of you might have had a reason for wanting Kinney out of the way. Now, some one of you had a hand in turning the ape loose. And until I get the answer, you're all going to stay right here. Well, you can't do that. We may be tied up here for weeks. This show's got to keep moving to support itself. It's the law, brother. All right, Stone, take him out and have him booked. Uh, but you... Just a small town cop wants to show how smart he is. Yeah. All right, get going, both of you. Go on. May I offer a suggestion, please? Go ahead. 
frightened bird, very difficult to catch. What does that mean in English? Old English adage say, give man plenty rope, will hang self. Not in this case. I'm going to give them a few hours in the jug, and I'll bet they uncork everything they know. Perhaps facts also remain corked in jug. <laughs> Guilty person, more apt to betray himself while engaged in everyday work at circus. <laughs> I suppose I should join the circus as a mind reader and guess the answer. Very wise plan. Are you kidding? Say, uh, that gives me an idea. If I let them carry on with the show, then I can study the conditions under which the crime was committed. Trained mind of policemen worked like lightning. Yeah. Say, listen, Charlie. You were in on the start of this. Why don't you stick with me to the finish? Thank you so much. We'll return to humble family and make arrangements. Fine. <laughs> Sue! Uh, Sue Toy! You again? Yeah, I'm going along with you. What? Sure, haven't you heard? I'm going to help Pop solve the murder. Well, you can solve anything you want to, but keep away from me. Oh, don't be like that. We'll have a swell time. I brought along my phonograph and I got a lot of records from Shanghai. That's fine. Then you can play yourself to sleep. Good night. Ladies seem to have dropped final curtain. Oh. <laughs> That, that's just her way of saying good night. Mm. Very practical. There is nothing to detain you further. What time do you say this train pulls out? Midnight. We better get aboard. What are you doing in the manager's compartment? Waiting to see Gaines. Well, wait outside. We don't want the smell of animals in here. What is it, Harold? So I'd better ride up forward tonight and keep an eye on the aid. That's a good idea. Go ahead. Is that Kenny's stateroom? Yes, mine's further down the corridor. Hold. Take the bags to Mr. Kenny's room. You don't mind sleeping there, Mr. Chan? Uh, no. Guilty conscience only enemy to peaceful rest. How about your son? Huh? Oh, oh, oh I don't mind. You can use this room any time you like. Thank you. Now, this way, sir. You are a Hindu from the side, Sue? Uh, yes, sir. But on the circus, we all have more than one job. I'm the porter on this car. <laughs> uh, circus performer like detective. Uh, must be Johnny of many trades. <laughs> yeah, you said it. Uh, bring all the baggage, please. Yes, sir. Mm. Did Kenny keep all his papers here? No, he used the safe in the business wagon, too. Well, how about having a look at it? In a lot of trouble. The wagon's already been loaded on the flat cars forward. Oh, well, we'll look at it in the morning. Oh, pardon me. It's all right. Dan, did you tell them? No. They'll find out soon enough. Oh, you should have told them tonight. Let me handle it, will you? Where are you going? I'm riding forward on the flat cars. I saw the... Little... Ancient adage say, music soothes savage breast. Uh, Please to reserve for such occasion. I was just trying to cheer things up, Pop. It's kind of creepy here in Kenny's room. Then recommend you brush teeth, say prayers, and go to bed. I'm not sleepy yet. You know, I'm going out on the platform and think this case over. I have new problem in female geometry? You know what you always say, Pop. If you want to understand men, study women. Yeah. Did Pop say that? Yeah. Tim! Ugh. Tim! Well, what do you want? How do you expect me to get any sleep with you stamping around over my head? You women can sleep no matter what's going on, but I'm worried. 
Well, lie down and count sheep. I never did like sheep, and you know it. Well, try elephants. You don't have to count so many. Think you're smart, don't you? Bullseye. Very proud of number one son. Gee, Pop, I knew we shouldn't have slept in here. Hey, Charlie. What happened? Uh, somebody object to Charlie Chan as passenger on train. A snake? How could that have gotten in here? Very strange. When retired, ventilator closed. Well, then someone must have opened it from the roof and slipped the snake in. Where are they kept? A Ford and one of the menagerie cars. Holt's the only one that handles them. Yeah, that's right. Well, what's the answer? Well, how do I know? I haven't left this car all night. How'd the snake get in here? How'd the ape get out of the cage? Question without answer. Like faraway water, no good for nearby fire. Yeah, but I know one answer, though. Somebody's trying to pin this on me just because I handle the snakes. Well, this time I'm going to find out what's what if I have to keep everyone on this train awake all night. <laughs> no cause for hurry now. The uh, enemy who misses Mark, like serpent, must coil to strike again. Good night. just doing my daily dozen. Uh, attitude prove Darwin theory correct. <laughs> uh, suggest you untie human pretzel and get dressed. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pop, get me out of this, will you? Uh, very wise to know way out before going in. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, thanks, Pop. Where are you going? Uh, I'm having breakfast with little people. More coffee, Mr. Chan? Thank you. Another piece of toast? <laughs> no more, thank you. <laughs> Very excellent coffee. Thank you. Tiny's a good cook. Do they dunk in China, Mr. Chan? Please? Dunk. Dunk. Oh, <laughs> a very ancient Chinese custom. Tiny, don't be so unrefined. I was hoping, Mr. Chen, that you'd have some new clues. Have uh, several clues. One need explanation. Perhaps you can be of assistance. Sure, I'll be glad to help. You enter business wagon last night before discovery of body? Why, I, uh... You better tell Mr. Chen everything. 
He's a mind reader. Very easy to read mind when clue like a uh, rag on sore thumb. Mm. Marks in dust on light shade prove little man on first visit slide down lamp cord to reach floor. It's true. I did go in. Mr. Gaines left his keys in there after the matinee. So I climbed down the ventilator and opened the door for him. Uh, something important Mr. Gaines want in wagon? I don't know. He started to open the safe, then Mr. Kinney came in. They got into an argument about business, so I beat it. But please don't tell the police. They suspect Mr. Gaines already. If they knew that, they'd be sure to arrest him. Uh, facts like photographic film must be exposed before developing. Mm. Uh, thank you for a very excellent breakfast. Don't mention it, Mr. Chen. Is there anything else we can do for you? I have a desire to again visit Ape's Cage. We'll take you there. I always bring the ape a banana in the morning. He's crazy about them. No matter how mad he is, it always quiets him. <laughs> yeah. This is Jumbo. He's my special pet. Really? <laughs> Most fortunate animal. <laughs> Like Charlie Chan, need to reduce waistline. <laughs> How would you like to be inside playing with them? Much prefer being outside looking in. <laughs> Quiet down. Al, I brought Caesar a banana. Be careful, Tiny. He's still pretty mean. Oh, he wouldn't hurt me. Will you help me up, Mr. Chan, please? Here, Caesar. Huh. Uh, any news of missing key? Uh, no, sir, but Mr. Macy put this policeman here to guard the cage. Hey, Pop! Pop! I've been looking all over for you. The business wagon was broken into last night, and Mr. Macy wants you there right away. More trouble for poor Mr. Gaines. Uh, trouble rain on man already wet. Excuse, please. Excuse. Looks like an amateur tried to break it open. A regular yank would have known he couldn't chisel his way through a cold steel safe door. Any fingerprints? No, not a trace. So where was the business wagon last night? On the flat car. Yeah, and I locked it up before it was put on the car. Pop! Look. They filed through the hasp to get into the wagon. Open the safe, Gaines. Let's take a look. What do you make of it, Pop? Very clever job. And uh, excellent bronze filings. Nothing's been touched. You didn't get into the safe. Well, for a quick guess, Charlie, I'd say that whoever was responsible for Kinney's death must have wanted something out of this safe. <laughs> Quite possible. Here, what's this? Joseph Kinney, personal. Life insurance policy, $50,000. Who is beneficiary? It was changed last month to uh, Marie Norman. Trapeze lady. Mr. Kinney's fiancée. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Here's a certificate of marriage. What's that? Juarez, Mexico, May 30th, 1935. Joseph Kinney and Nellie Farrell. Say, what is this fiancé business? They're very peculiar. Man already married, announced engagement to, to trapeze lady. I got it. The Norman girl must have found out he was too time in her and decided to collect the insurance. Too soon to count chickens uh, until eggs are in nest. Who is Nellie Farrell? Uh, the wardrobe woman, Dan Farrell's sister. She and Kinney used to go together, but... Uh, he threw her over for Marie Norman. Did you ever hear Kinney speak of being married to her? Never. If he did, he kept it to himself. Well, is that his signature? Yes, it is. Very strange. Nellie Farrell did not reveal last night she was wife of a murdered man. I got it, Mr. Macy. Maybe this is the lucky break we're looking for. We'll need it if we're ever going to crack this case. One grain of luck is sometimes worth more than a whole rice field of wisdom. Yeah. Say, where can I find this Nellie Farrell? She's probably over on the train. 
Come on, Charlie, let's go have a little talk with her. Are you Nellie Farrell? No. She was over there reading the morning paper just a few minutes ago. Well, where'd she go? Who wants to know? Oh, she said she had some business in town. She'd be back before the show started. Yeah. Say, Pop, I just thought of something. I'll see you later. So she went to town on business. I wonder what that's all about. Uh, perhaps we'll learn when meet with her. Very excellent likeness of Mr. Kinney. Yeah, well, we know what he looked like. His picture isn't going to get us anything. <laughs> Cannot tell where path lead until reach end of road. Hey, let me look at that, will you? Say, big boy, what's the big idea? Here it is. What a freight. Come on! on the right track. There's Nellie's brother. Where? Let me see. Well, I should kiss a pig. There, there, dear. There, there. There, there. There's Nellie, too. They're coming this way. Keep your head down and we'll trail them. What did the lawyer say? There isn't a chance of a slip up. I can claim everything. Good morning, Mr. Chan. How did you know it was me? I never forget a face. Don't give me away. I'm on a hot trail. You must be. Something's burning. Hiya, Sue. We're detectives. We're in disguise. Well, the first thing you better learn is how to keep your disguise up. <laughs> Say, Pop. <laughs> You find Nellie Farrell visit lawyer's office? Gee, how did you know? <laughs> Very simple. Saw you get idea from newspaper with the clipping cut out. Uh, very proud you will learn tricks of trade so quickly. And I thought I was putting something over on you. But she went there, all right. And when she came out... She meet brother Dan Farrell. I'm telling you? You're telling me? Very simple. Brother also missing from circus lot. Well, anyway, I followed them and listened in. She told him there wasn't a chance of a slip-up. She could claim everything. And then? And then they walked on and... Well, uh, I... You meet contortion lady? Oh, how do you do it, Pop? <laughs> Evidence like a uh, nose on anteater. Jade Pin belonged to lady of many angles. Gee, you can see through anything. I don't see what you need a microscope for. Good tools shorten labor have made very interesting discovery. Observe. What are those spots? Bronze filings from padlock on door of business wagon. Discovered in this envelope, which contained personal papers of Mr. Kinney. But that envelope was inside the safe. And the safe wasn't broken open. Contradiction, please. Bronze filings prove otherwise. Same person who filed lock, also open safe. Must have known combination. Then batter safe door to give appearance of unsuccessful attempt at burglary. It's over my head. Particles of bronze filings from padlock unconsciously deposited in envelope when burglar handled same. I get it. But what are you suppose they stole from the envelope? Mystery is still to be solved. 
Oh, I, uh, I was just going to tell Mr. Chan the matinee is about to start, and I thought maybe he needed something before I left. Oh, yeah? Well, get out of here. We'll make it snappy. I just caught Holt listening outside the door. Inquisitive person like bear after honey. Sometime find hornet's nest. Circus starting. Perhaps Nellie Farrell now returned. Yeah, that's why I came to get you. We'll look her up. Advise no mention of marriage certificate. Leave first move to lady. Oh, sure. Hey, Jenny, what about my turban? Right there under your nose. Where? Jenny, where are my slippers? I don't know. Yeah, but there's no shoes with this outfit. Look for them yourself. That's Nellie's job, not mine. Lou. Did you think over what we talked about last night? Yes, Hal, but I couldn't leave Marie, especially now. There isn't anything you can do for her. Listen, I've got it fixed up for a job in Chicago. We'll hop the night train by... Oh, Jenny! Isn't Nellie Farrell back yet? No, and I think it's a dirty trick piling up all this work on Yeah, her. don't blame me if I'm late for the show. Jenny, haven't you found my slippers yet? All right, folks. Do the best you can. We'll have everything straightened out in a little while. Jenny, get your parade stuff racked over there. Make more room for this other wardrobe. I only got one pair of hands, Mr. Gaines. I'm doing the best I can. I know you. Well, Nellie? Why weren't you on the job? I don't have to answer to you anymore, Mr. Gaines. What do you mean by that? I'm just as much boss here now as you are. I'm Joe Kinney's widow. I put in my claim for his share of the show. What are you talking about, Nellie? We were married five months ago. Why didn't you tell me about it? Why, you were with... <laughs> Excuse, so clumsy. Better to slip with foot than with tongue. I didn't tell you about our being married, Dan, because... Well, I knew you didn't like Joe Kenny, and I suppose he was keeping our marriage a secret because he was making a play for Marie Norman. That's not true. You're just saying that because you hate my sister. You keep out of this, Lou, and I can see through your game. Because Joe Kinney's dead, you're trying to put something over. But I know he never married you, or he'd have told me. Why should he? You were just another woman to him. And you thought you were so clever taking him away from me. Pardon the interruption, please. Uh, you have marriage certificate? No, Joe never let me have it. Uh, when was time of marriage? It was uh, May the 30th, Decoration Day. We were in El Paso and the big top blew down and we couldn't go on that night, so Joe and I went across the border but to you're... Juarez and we were married. Now I know you're lying. I'm sorry, Miss Norman, but it's the truth. We found the marriage certificate. Then it's a fake. No, it isn't. Mr. Gaines verified the signature. But I know where Joe was that night. Marie, you haven't time now. There's your music. He wasn't in Mexico, and I can prove it. We'll get your story later, Miss Norman. Hurry. Get back to your work, folks. We've got a show off. Just a minute, please. Why didn't you tell us about this last night when your husband was killed? Joe and I hadn't been living together, so I thought I should see a lawyer and find out just where I stood. I'll take my marriage certificate. <laughs> One moment, please, sir. Certificate much safer in hands of law. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've got nothing to worry about. We'll take good care of it. Come on, Charlie. Marie! Norman! Out here and keep things going. Well, whatever she knew, 
Her mouth's shut now. Silent witness sometimes speak loudest. She's still alive, but unconscious. We're taken to a dressing room. I don't see how it could have happened. That Reagan is tested before every performance. Very strange. Accident most conveniently timed. I'll get the doctor's report. Hey! Suggest you place very close guard over Miss Norman might meet with another accident. You're right, Charlie. I'll see to it. Observe. Bullet hole in canvas over trapeze. Very commendable research. Oh, uh, have discovered secret of perpetual agitation? I was only testing a machine, Pop. The magnifying female charms, very ancient optical illusion. <laughs> Look, Charlie. I found this gun under a wagon near the big tent. Now, here's the dope. Somebody was afraid Marie Norman would squawk about the night of May 30th and tried to finish her off. That's exactly what I thought. And it must have been the Farrell girl or maybe her brother. That doesn't make sense. This marriage certificate's on the up and up. <laughs> May I examine document, please? They're exactly alike. That proves it's Kinney's signature. Sure. Contradiction, please. Even if name signed one million times, no two signatures ever exactly alike. Then the Norman girl was right. It's a fake. Kinney's name was traced on there from the photo. Undoubtedly correct. It's a cinch. Look, Farrow had planned this phony marriage racket. He turned the ape loose to murder Kinney and planted the certificate in the safe. Then when the Norman girl threatened to spoil his game, he tried to knock her off. That's enough for me. <laughs> Not always wise to accept simplest solution. Mind, like parachute, only function when open. <laughs> if I can't make a case out of this, I'll pin my badge on the ape. Mr. Macy, I agree with you. <laughs> Thanks. Who was it? What? What happened? Uh, so sorry. Uh, unloaded gun always caused most trouble. How'd that rifle get here? Was reposing against wall? Well, that's funny. Mr. Gaines never let it out of his stateroom. Please to return gun. Much safer in hands of owner. Gaines' rifle. That takes us right back to the guy we started with. But he's not going to talk his way out of it this time. We got enough on him now to make a pinch. No use to hurry unless you're catching right train. Well, then what would you advise, Charlie? Wait for Miss Norman. She give clue when conscious. Is she badly hurt, Doctor? Well, there are two compound rib fractures and a possible spine injury. I sent for the fluoroscope before I risked moving her. When do you think she'll regain consciousness? Well, that's almost impossible to say. If something doesn't break when she comes to, I'm going to pinch the whole show. Excuse, please. You recall where sister was night of May 30th? No, I don't, Mr. Chad. I was... I wasn't with her. Perhaps you keep book of newspaper clippings. Why, well, yes. May I have permission to examine, please? Yes. 
It's in the top tray of her trunk. something, Pop? Telephone police headquarters. El Paso, Texas. Get all information concerning this shooting at Ace Casino. Also, description of Keeler. What's on your mind? Have idea for quick solution of mystery. Important you return with report soon as possible. You can count on me. Listen, operator, you gotta get me through. This is official business. Clear all wires. Yes, uh, police headquarters, El Paso, Texas. Make it snappy and reverse the charges. Mr. Macy, I can't stand it. Why don't they do something for my sister? Everything humanly possible is being done. Any change in condition? None. Perhaps we'd better take action. Each moment's delay increased danger. I'll make the necessary arrangements immediately. Blue, your sister's condition is quite serious. An emergency operation is necessary. We can't move it to a hospital. It will have to be done here without delay. <laughs> Lieutenant Macy, will you send into town for the equipment and assistance? Yes, sir. Don't worry, kid. I'll see that she gets the best of everything. Sergeant, drive to the hospital and see that the ambulance and equipment order to Dr. Mead gets here without delay. One moment, please. Must ask everyone's cooperation. Any noise or disturbance during operation may prove fatal. Please to remain away from tent and be quiet as possible. Get back to your quarters, folks. Farrell, you and Blake look at the animals. Yeah, that's right, Chief. The Ace Casino, night of May 30th. I want his description. Yeah, yeah, I get you. What? Repeat that, please. Yes, we got someone here who answers that exactly. Don't worry, Chief. This is Mr. Chan, Jr., and I'll get your man.
and sun late. Tim, ah, stop bothering me. Do you suppose they'll be much longer with the operation? I'm worried. Worry ain't gonna get you anywhere. Why don't you be calm like me? Ouch. See, you made me cut myself. I've got a funny feeling that something's going to happen. Oh, stop acting like a kid. Why don't you grow up? Charlie, your plan didn't work. Whoever it was got by the guard and released the ape. All right, boys. What's happened? What's the meaning of this? Necessary deception to protect life from Miss Norman. Sister safely taken to hospital much earlier. Rapid recovery assured. Suggest you both go there immediately. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chan. Hey, Pop! Pop! Pop, I got the information you wanted. The description of the killer at El Paso fits Holt. And I just caught him letting the ape out. I tried to stop him, but he slugged me. Holt, and he's our man. Cover all roads out of town. Send out a general broadcast. One moment, please. Unnecessary to search further. Here is Killer. Holt! Very clever scheme to establish perfect alibi. When committing murder, turn ape loose to give impression real ape guilty of crime. First, Suspected ape was man in disguise. From clue of hairs found on windowsill at scene of crime. Proved to be dead hairs, not from living ape. Second clue, marks outside window of business wagon. Real ape would never use barrel, would use feet to climb up to window. And now, report from El Paso, Complete link in chain. Mr. Kinney and Holt, old friends, meet at gambling casino on night of May 30th. This clipping show, they use crooked cards, were caught cheating, and in fight that follow, Holt kills Sheriff. Kinney protect him from police with the job in circus as snake charmer. Later, Men quarrel over money won at gambling. Kinney receives strange messages threatening life. Send for humble self to discuss matter. Holt, fearing Kinney would turn him over to police, resort to murder. Today, when Miss Norman revealed knowledge of night of May 30th, Holt, fearing statement would incriminate him as murderer, Attempt to remove her also. First attempt fail. Suspected he would strike again, so with aid of uh, Lieutenant Macy, laid trap. Death right finished to mystery. Yes, we cleared that up all right, Charlie. But it doesn't clear you two of forging that phony marriage certificate. Take him to headquarters. Charlie, you're a great guy. Put it there. I'll say you are. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a cigar, Mr. Chen? No, thank you. How about you, Mr. Macy? Oh, thanks. Well, Gaines, uh, 
I guess you can move the show out tonight, uh, unless Charlie here objects. Uh, no objections. But uh, Charlie Chan likes some time to see circus as simple spectator. I'll attend to that, Charlie. You'll have a lifetime pass to this show for yourself and family. Now, how many shall I make it out for? Fourteen or... Uh... I think fourteen quite sufficient. Maybe more later. <laughs> <laughs> 